Now the next step in a good installation is to pipe the pump. That is to connect the pipes from your system to the newly installed pump. Now there are too many recommendations on pipes to list here. Those are all listed in full in your service manual, but I'm gonna try to hit on the highlights in this video. First, you want to make sure to use the same pipe size as the ports on your pump, especially those inlet ports. Uh, matching the pipe size to the pump is going to make sure that we're using a large enough size so that we don't starve the pump. Along that same line, you also want to minimize the length of your suction line if possible. Uh, using large diameter shorter pipes is going to maximize your NPSH available and reduce the risk that we're going to cavitate the pump. You also want to make sure that these pipes are clean and clear of debris. You also want to make sure that a strainer is installed. Now the strainer is going to make sure that any foreign debris that is left in those pipes is going to get pulled out before it enters the pump and damages it. In truth, startup is the most likely time for this to occur because fluid has not flowed through these pipes before. Uh, we've seen too many times in the field where things like uh, plastic uh, wrappers, zip ties, gloves, weld rods, and others get left inside pipes and they get sucked into the pump at startup because a strainer was not installed. So we want to make sure that that strainer is there so that any of that foreign material is caught before it enters the pump and damages it. And lastly, you want to make sure those pipes are supported. And remember, it's not just the weight of the pipes, it's the weight of the pipes with the liquid inside. The pump should not be acting as the pipe support. So you want to make sure the pipes are supported. You want to make sure that they're not going to be pulling that pump into misalignment, ruining the alignment that you did in the previous step. Thank you.